Hello and welcome to GCS Today here on Channel 21, the program that brings you news and information about Gaston County Schools. I'm Todd Hagens. On today's edition, we talk with Superintendent Booker about school safety. We hear from the principal of Webb Street School and we meet a few winners from the Gaston Regional Science and Engineering Fair. All of this on GCS Today. Joining me on GCS Today is Superintendent of Schools W. Jeffrey Booker. Mr. Booker, thank you for being with us today. It's great to be here, Tom. We are talking about school safety, and several weeks ago, the state released what they called the Consolidated Data Report, and it has a lot of information in it. One talks about school crime and safety, and so we've got some good news to share uh, today about that. When you look at the 2015-16 school year, our school crime rate is 3.740, and it's the lowest among the 10 largest school districts. And that's why we like to tout to our public, our teachers, that we work hard to be a safe school system, and we feel what makes us the large district safest school system in the state. Yeah, that's something that we like to um, we like to promote a lot, that we, we really focus on that school safety. It, it's very important for us, and it's good to see that it's, it remains important year after year. Well, when you look at our core beliefs, one of the five core beliefs is safety. And this is just an independent measure that shows what we talk about being a belief is something that we practice. And we mentioned 3.740 is the rate for 2015-16. The year before that, we were at 4.073, and then in 2013-14, 4.723. So we've seen a decrease in that crime rate for schools over the past three years. And that's just a reflection of a lot of great partnerships. We work with law enforcement. You know, you can't say enough about what the county police do to work with our school system to help educate. We have a full-time safety compliance officer that his job is to work with our schools, do surprise inspections and work. But then it really speaks to what our teachers and our administrators and how much they value that having a safe learning environment is the basic starting point for a good education. And we also have the comprehensive safety plans for the schools that are reviewed on a regular basis, updated as needed. And so I think that really shows the importance that safety has um, for Gaston County Schools. And, and that review, you need to understand, Todd, goes all the way through the Board of Education. We'll have a closed session where those plans are presented and the board is given the opportunity to review, comment, ask questions. And I can tell you today, I was in a meeting talking about school safety and just what you said, addressing a change in our environment and what do we need to do. Mr. Booker, when you think about school safety, we have made some upgrades in our schools, some of the life safety equipment, camera equipment, and there are some other things that we have done in our schools. Yeah, Todd, when you go back four years, the school system formed a committee. It was made up of parents, law enforcement, as well as school administrators. And we talked about what we needed to do to enhance our safety in our schools. Some of the things included, we did some secondary entrances for some of our schools where you walked in and you were in the middle of the lobby. So we put secondary doors there. We had enhanced our identity management system so that when folks arrive at our schools, they check in, they present ID, and we have a record of who all is in our buildings. And those are just some of the steps that that committee talked about doing, and we continue to look at that report and see what we can do to improve our safety. And visitors on our campus last year for the first time, they noticed the buzz-in systems that are at the front door. That's just another layer of security at schools. Yes, so instead of being buzzed in and then showing identification, they're asked outside through a camera to present present their ID so people can see that and then buzz them into the school. So. And I guess, Mr. Booker, it really comes back to the, the idea, first, the strong partnership that we have with law enforcement. I don't think you can say enough about the cooperation that we that we get from the Gaston County Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, the City Police Departments, and other agencies. Yes, and what is great for us is our kids start in the elementary seeing law enforcement and it helps them understand law enforcement is your friend. They're here to protect and you can have a relationship and it just grows as they get. And then in the high schools, those resource officers have a great uh, respect with the kids, but they also have an ability to be part of our community in our schools. And I think it helps us with the safety. And you mentioned the elementary, at the elementary level, we were able a couple of years ago to expand the school resource officer program into those elementary schools so that all of the schools have, have the resources. 
And that's one of the things that I hope our community understands. You've got to commend the leadership from the county commission through the school board that the state made some funds available, but it had to be matched. And they stepped up and did it, which allowed us to go from having resource officers in the high school and middle schools down to the elementary. And then a lot of partnerships formed. We already enjoyed knowing each of our local uh, law enforcement agencies, but they're helping to provide those officers and that coverage. And it has benefited our school system. Mr. Booker, another component to the school safety, in addition to the support from law enforcement, it comes down to our employees really being aware of safety. It's on the front of our minds and being very diligent. Diligence is the word, and it is great. When you walk through our schools, you'll see them glancing at lapels to see if you have the visitor tag or you display in your Gaston County ID, and that's for the protection of everyone. I can tell you that when I check into a school, the front office is asking me, where is your ID? Because we need to know who's in our buildings and we need to always be asking those questions. We want to say it again so everybody watching hears it. We have a great school system, a safe school system here in Gaston County Schools and it, it's important because we have to be safe for that teaching and learning to take place. Yeah, and that's where, again, we got to go back to what our teachers do every day, being aware of children's needs and our community's needs and just being diligent in helping raise flags that we all look at and we take very seriously. We do a lot of great work in Gaston County Schools when it comes to school safety and it is paying off for Gaston County Schools. Once again, the safest large district in the state among the top 10 school districts. And, and we just thank the community for supporting all these measures that we do and recognizing we're doing it for the protection of their children. Superintendent Booker, thank you for being with us today on GCS Today. Thanks, Tom. Stay with us here on Channel 21. We'll be right back. Hunter's Career Academy, it's fantastic. It's like being part of a family. It's just a great place to be, just great. You need to check it out. Joining me on GCS today is Kelly Howe. She is the principal at Webb Street School. Welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. I'm glad to be here today. Let's talk about Webb Street School. What is Webb Street School? Webb Street School is a public separate school serving students with intellectual and physical disabilities in Gaston County. And the, the school is part of Gaston County Schools. It serves children all across the county. What grade levels do you have? Um, we are the only school that provides a K-12 plus um, education for our students in Gaston County. That means that we have students um, in the age range of age five for kindergarten all the way up to the age of attainment, which is either 21 or 22 years old, depending on the child's birthday. So we are kindergarten through 12th grade plus. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. Well, what... What is, the, uh, what is a day like for you at Webb Street School? I always say that Webb Street is a happy day every day. Our students are so excited to be at school. They love coming in. They love learning. They do the typical um, reading, math, science, and social studies. And then on top of that, we have extra classes. Um, we have art and music and PE as well. But then we have some classes that are tailored just specifically for Webb Street that our students participate in as well, such as site-based vocational training training and community-based vocational training where our older students go out in the community and get work skill training. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there are a number of programs that, that are going on right now at Webb Street. You have introduced a sensory garden and you also have an 
aquaponics program. Let's yes. talk a little bit about those two programs. Yes, sure. Our sensory garden, we opened the garden on October 20th of this year. We're super proud of the garden. It is a, an interactive sensory area. So children um, that have um, intellectual disabilities sometimes have sensory processing disorders and this garden was made so that they could have a learning space that's outside and in the open air that really helps them with their five senses. So there are things out there to touch, to smell. We grow vegetables, cauliflower, right now kale, uh, chard, greens. Um, so we have a garden. We have a, a handicap accessible garden there. We also have many interactive play features that the students can use that they can make different sounds, uh, interact with different pieces of equipment that help them with uh, visual and motor skills. Also, our therapists use the garden as well for occupational therapy and physical therapy. It's just a really fun place. What do the students and also the parents think about the sensory garden? They love it. We've had a great response from the sensory garden. People go out there and they say, wow, this place is so neat. It's very colorful, very interactive. Um, like I said, there are things that, that really cater to all five senses. So there's lots of lots of color, lots of sound, uh, things that the students can make noise with, things that they can touch and feel. And it's just really a real immersive, interactive uh, learning environment. You also have an aquaponics program. Now, exactly what is that? <laughs> an aquaponics program is a program where you grow, people have heard of hydroponic growing, which is soilless, agriculture, so it's growing with only water. Well, what's really exciting about our aquaponics program is that that is the introduction of fish into the growing cycle. So we have a, an aquaponics-based program in our greenhouse that we've just started where we have tilapia that we grow and they in turn fertilize our our hydroponic growing system that has various types of lettuce and greens and herbs. So it's an all captive system that uh, basically fertilizes itself um, with the use of the fish. The That's kids great. are really excited about that. Yeah, it sounds like a great mm -hmm. program. Now, I also know that you have a pool there at Web, Web Street School, and I think that's probably unique to uh, Gaston County. Yes, it is very unique. It's a, We have a pool, it's a, used for um, aquatic therapy. So all of our students have aquatic therapy at least once a week. So they all love going to the pool. Some of our students who have needs, uh, their physical limitation needs, or some medical need that is assisted by being in uh, water therapy may get pool time uh, more than just once a week, d depending on their IP. And I also know that you're in the process of trying to enhance the playground equipment that you have at mm -hmm. Web Street, and you've had some fundraisers uh, to help with that project. Yes, yes. We are currently trying to uh, raise funding to build an inclusive accessible playground so what that means is that any student regardless of their mobility whether they are uh, wheelchair bound or just have um, braces on their legs or have mobility challenges that the playground will be accessible to them and once they are in the playground area that it will be inclusive in the way that there will be activities whether they are seated in a chair or whether they can have some mobility that they will be able to participate in play with their peers who are m mobile children. What, what do you love about your job being at Web Street? What, what makes you want to get up every morning and, and, and go to school? The, the children. The children there are, are remarkable. They overcome so many challenges and with them they're just happy because this is, the, this is their life. They, they don't consider themselves having challenges in any way. So they are at school, they're happy, they're willing to learn. Our staff certainly is dedicated to the students. They want to be there and work with these unique individuals. And it's just a really great place. It's a real caring environment. It's a real team 
um, driven um, attitude because it's I say it's all hands on deck all day long so time goes by really fast it seems like the school day's over just when it started so I guess the positive atmosphere and the family type environment um, is what really makes being at Web Street a joy for me and you have a great staff as well at yes, Web Street yes they are so dedicated they're really great really great it, we have a great program at, at Webb Street School that uh, serves uh, a number of students mm -hmm. and I know that uh, they love school and their parents are so glad that they can be at Webb Street School where they can receive the services and the resources and attention that, that they need. Yes, we have a really active PTO. Our PTO is sponsoring the second annual uh, fashion show, the Art of Fashion Show. Um, and that is a solely PTO driven fundraiser and again those funds will go toward the building of the new playground. Kelly Howe, Principal of Webb Street School, thanks so much for being with us on GCS today. Yes, thank you for having me. Coming up, we meet several of our Science Fair winners. You are watching GCS Today here on Channel 21. Hey you. Yeah you. Getting that college education? What are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills. The smarts? Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? Joining me on GCS today is Bianca Yavalak. She is a science curriculum facilitator for Gaston County Schools. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Todd. We are talking about the Gaston Regional Science and Engineering Fair. And we've had a lot of interest in the science fair over the past couple of years. What type of projects uh, do you see as being the most popular at the science fair? This is our ninth year of science fair. Uh, and so over the years, we have seen projects grow from very simple to all of a sudden, we're starting to see a lot more microbiology. We have a great partnership with Gaston College. Uh, we've seen a lot of environmental science projects, a lot of water quality projects, things that students feel like relate to their everyday. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of, of good high level growth um, in terms of the types of projects and the types of science the kids are doing. Now you are seeing uh, Gaston College partner with the Science Fair to provide assistance and advice to the students yes. uh, on the projects, but we also have a partnership with the Shield Museum because that's where we host yes. the Science Fair yes. each year. We have a lot of great partnerships. Uh, the Shield Museum has been amazingly accommodating over the years. They give us space, they give us personnel, they give us basically anything we ask for. Uh, they've been a wonderful partner. Uh, FMC Lithium in Bessemer City is our biggest sponsor. Uh, they granted us quite a bit of money a few years ago and allowed us to kind of grow this program to benefit all of the students in Gaston County. Um, Gaston County Schools, of course, is a huge supporter. We've always had a lot of support from everyone, top to bottom, uh, and it takes a lot of hands to make this run, and so we are always appreciative for everyone who pitches in to help. Now it's important to note that it's not just a high school science fair. You have middle school and last year or the year before we expanded it to include elementary this school. This was the second year where we expanded to elementary. So according to the state science fair rules, students in third grade through 12th grade can participate. And so for the last two years, we've had students representing um, about 25 different schools uh, in grades three through 12. So it's been really nice to see the younger kids starting to get involved. Why do you think having a science fair is important? There are so many benefits and so many skills that students get from presenting science fair projects that aren't necessarily science related. And so much in education we talk about preparing them for the real world and preparing them for college and preparing them for jobs and, and everything they're going to see when they leave our classrooms. They learn research skills, they learn communication skills, they learn to write, they learn to stand and talk to an adult, uh, which is a huge skill, especially for our younger students to learn. Um, and then, of course, they learn some science content, they learn the scientific method, and they learn those things. But it's such a good experience um, to build them as a whole student as opposed to just a science student. Now we have students that win at the local level, they advance to a regional science fair, yes. the state science fair, and in last year we had a student make it to the international science yes, fair where she, she won a silver yes. medal for her project that 
turned kudzu into bioplastic, if yes, I'm recalling correctly? she did. She, she was able to use um, kudzu starch, which is a byproduct of the kudzu plant, uh, which you know, we all see on the side of the road has taken over most of North Carolina. Uh, and she took it and she was able then to create a usable, malleable, moldable plastic from it. And so she, she did really well. She did. Them. Now you have two students here today that you've brought yes. with you. We're going to go over and meet them and talk to them about their science projects. And they will go on to represent us in the regional competition. Yes. Maybe they'll show up at the International Science so. Fair. Let's go over and awesome. meet them. We have two students. We are going to begin with Britton Payton. She is a student at Stuart W. Kramer High School. Thank yes. you for being with us. Thank you. Now tell us about your project. Um, What's the title of the project and what did you want to accomplish with it? Um, the title of my project is Superfood Microgreens. And what I wanted to accomplish was looking at the gut microbiota and seeing how the microgreens enhance it. We use Lactobacillus acidophilus and non-pathogenic E. coli. And we saw a significant increase when compared to the control of the pro probiotic bacteria, which aids in over uh, overall nutrition. Okay, so um, what does that really mean? <laughs> it just means that the microgreens are enhancing the good bacteria of our gut, okay. which could lead to a reduction in the, your possibilities of developing a chronic disease, such as colon cancer or IBS. Okay, when you say a microgreen, what specifically, what type of food is considered a microgreen? Microgreens are just the seedlings from mature vegetables. So... Um, they germinate in about 7 to 12 days. And so if someone is watching and they hear about your project and they say, hey, I want, I want to uh, eat microgreens for uh, better health, what do you suggest? I assume something like broccoli or, or other green vegetables? I suggest broccoli was the one I saw the most increase in the lactobacillus acidophilus growth. So I would definitely suggest um, the broccoli microgreens. And so by eating uh, what we consider healthier foods, it helps with the, good, like you said, the good bacteria right. that, is, that is inside of you, it's in your body, in mm -hmm. your stomach, that helps yes. with, with digestion and, and just being a healthier person. Yes, because what we see when we're um, taking in mature vegetables and just processed food as a whole, as the Western culture, we're seeing an increase in the chronic diseases. And that's one of the reasons why, is because our mature vegetables um, are fertilized and you take in that um, agriculture fertilizer and it settles in your digestive tract and it creates um, the nitrate oxide, oxide settles and um, it can leak those toxins into your bloodstream. Now with the research that you have conducted here, do you see um, science in your future? Yes, I definitely want to um, continue on that path. What type of job, if you get to create a dream job, um, what would it be? Um, I either want to be an occupational therapist or a physician assistant. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, you've done some excellent research there, and um, I hope it goes right on to that regional level and on to the state level Me and do. beyond. So thank you uh, for being with us today. We're going to move over and um, meet our next student. Uh, we have Mac Gallman. Mac is a student at Ashbrook High School. And Mac, your project, tell us a little bit about what you um, wanted to accomplish and what you found out through your research. Uh, I was testing the effectiveness of different agricultural BMPs or best management practices and how they reduce flow rate for surface water runoff and erosion and just to see with a lot of the rainstorms that we have around here especially during the summer uh, erosion and uh, runoff are big issues that have been facing agricultural settings and fields and so I kind of want to look in to see how we can fix those uh, and just the best ways to reduce that issue. Well, through your research, what did you determine as a best practice? Uh, the, of the three, I chose three different BMPs to focus on. I used contour farming, uh, cover crop farming, and row cropping. And in my experiment, the uh, contour farming produced the best results, but a lot of it really just depends on what field and what kind of setting you're using. Now you say contour farming, what does that mean? Uh, it's using terraces and stuff like that to kind of break up the smooth surface and the flow of a field to give settling areas for water. Well, what, what sparked your interest in this topic? 
Uh, I've always been, always enjoyed being outdoors, and I'm looking into going into biosystems and possibly agricultural engineering is my major in college. So it's kind of always been something I've looked into, and I thought it would be something that I'd enjoy to use as my science fair topic. Okay. And did the research um, come out like you thought it would? It came out the best, I mean, as good as I could have hoped. It was hard taking a large field and bringing it into a smaller setting. Uh, so just imagine a field that I could fit in my garage is kind of what I had to work with. So with what the tests that I ran produced good results. Great. Well, both of you have um, put together some fantastic projects uh, for the science fair, and we certainly um, want to wish you good luck as you go on to the regional competition and represent Gaston County Schools. Uh, thank you both very much for being here. And um, Bianca, you can right there that's a that's an example two examples of the great work that our students are doing in gaston county schools um with the science fair um i, I don't know what what you can say about it. it it's just it's really impressive to see students uh engage in in research and engage in a project like like the ones at the science fair when we started this program uh next year will be our 10th annual science fair it's a very big deal very exciting when we started we wanted to change the way our students viewed science education and the way that a community viewed science in our schools. Uh, and I feel like we have watched students grow in this program to the point that we're producing high level competitive research um, from 12th graders, which is impressive. It's, so, it, it is very, very exciting. It is very impressive and very exciting. Bianca Yavalak, thank you so much for being with thank us today on us. GCS Today. Thanks. Thank you for watching GCS Today here on Channel 21. Stay tuned for the latest school news and information. We look forward to seeing you next time.